select the major product of the following series of reactions. So if we look at our starting material, we have a ketone and we have an ester. And specifically, the, what we call this is an acetoacetic ester. Okay, so the aceto coming from this point, acetic, kind of like acetic acid, what we have here, and we have the ester of that. And so this is an acetoacetic ester synthesis that we are doing. So this is a set series of reactions. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to treat this with a base. And so notice the base, this ethoxide, matches the ester. So if it's the ethyl um, ester, then you're going to use ethoxide. If this was, say, the methyl ester, then you would use methoxide. And it's likely to be one of those two because we typically deal with small esters. So what this is going to do is it's going to react with the most acidic hydrogen. So the most acidic hydrogen would be alpha to the carbonyl, and specifically it's gonna be the ones in between the two carbonyls because you're gonna have resonance with both of those. So the first thing that's gonna happen is your ethoxide is going to remove one of these two protons, giving you the enolate. And this enolate is a good nucleophile and it can attack an electrophile such as an alkyl halide. So in this second step, we have an alkyl halide. Um, so we have specifically this alkyl halide. And you can see that this is gonna do a nucleophilic attack. So you're gonna have it attack the carbon that the bromine is attached to, because that's your electrophilic carbon. And then you're gonna break that bond. So we're forming a new carbon-carbon bond right here. And I'm just going to number this main chain so we can keep track of these. So I'm going to just say one, two, three, and recognize we've got a methyl group off of that carbon two. So we have one, two, three, and a methyl group off of that carbon two. And I'm going to add the numbers on. Okay. Um, so this is the first two steps. So you've deprotonated and you've added that alkyl group. And the next thing you're going to do here with the H3O plus in heat is you're going to do a hydrolysis. Right? So you're going to hydrolyze that ester to the carboxylic acid. And if you keep heating this up, you're also going to decarboxylate or lose CO2. So initially, let's go ahead and draw the hydrolysis product. Right? So that's transforming the ester to the carboxylic acid. And then when you decarboxylate, you're essentially losing this group in your decarboxylation. So you kind of just take that off and be able to see your product. So let's go ahead and number this entire chain now. Right, so these three carbon atoms are now four, five, and six here. Um, and so when you lose your CO2, you're just gonna have that chain. So you're gonna have your carbonyl. So carbon's one, two, three, four, five, six, with that methyl group off of carbon five. And we just wanna take a look for that in the products, and we can see that here in D.